Getting your color correction to look right can sometimes be a little bit difficult, so I wanted to show you something that might help you out. So this is Fusion Studio, but this should be available in pretty much everything else. I know After Effects for sure has it. Same with DaVinci Resolve. I'm sure Nuke and uh, Photoshop have it as well. So if you wanna use those, by all means, go for it. What we're talking about is scopes. So by default, your Fusion will be set up a little bit different than this. I just went to View Layouts and then set it to this mid flow. And then you don't normally have those little boxes up here. So if you hit click in here and click Shift and Q, or right click and come to View, and then quad view, it'll bring up our scopes. Now by default, these are all set to the same thing, I believe, and you can kind of set them to whatever you want. There's a few different things in here. So if we come to views, we have our 2D viewer, which is, if we look here, just what this is. We also have a 3D histogram, which I don't find very useful. You also have the histogram, which is this first one our vector scopes, which I don't use very much either. And then you have a waveform. Now you have some different settings with these as well. So my waveforms, I actually have two of these last two are set to waveform. One, this first one is set to just the overall color. And the second one is set to RGB so that I can see kind of what's going on with our image. So as you start to reach the 100 value, that's really where your values start to clip out and at zero that's going to be just your straight black so you can see kind of a breakdown overall of your your image and kind of what's going on with it and you can start to affect the different things now don't worry about too much about the nodes here just know on the left here we have our unedited image and on the right we have our our node tree that has the color corrector in it so as i start to move like this around you see things start to change we'll stay the same over here now, if you noticed as well, as I start to move this around, you see our histograms start to change, the balance of our colors start to shift, and if I were to adjust things like the lift, bring this up, it's gonna kind of wash out our image where it's white a little bit, brings up all these values down at the bottom, and that's because we're lifting everything up. And if I were to just take this down, it's going to start to crush everything and just bring everything down towards those black values. Now, obviously those are super extreme cases and you're not really ever gonna push things like that. Well, at least you probably aren't, but as we start to adjust like the gain a little bit, it affects things a little bit differently. You can see that our histogram starts to shift. If we want to just affect like the shadows or something, you can see how that effects in our histogram as well. So it's good to take a look at these as you're kind of adjusting, make sure that you're not blowing anything out. I go ahead and go to like the highlights here. If I were to just start cranking these up, you can see we're really starting to hit those that 100 value and things are starting to really kind of blow out, which is not what you're probably looking for. If that's your artistic decision, then that's on you. But as we start to drag this down, you can see we start to hit it a little bit, that's not too bad, but as we start to get too much of that, you see that it starts to, to kind of blow those, those highlights out. So you wanna avoid doing things like that, and it's a little bit easier to see kind of what's going on with this as well. You can also see like a breakdown of like your colors and how they're being adjusted. So we're just dragging the hue slider around for just our highlights here. You can see how that affects our image does some interesting stuff, but you can kind of use this to your advantage to go about your color correction process and make sure that you're not getting things too blown out. And as things appear across different um, devices, they're going to appear differently. So this will help you out with that as well. So stuff down here towards this zero on certain devices, for example, my monitor, it looks okay. Um, I don't have uh, this like super dark image, but on other devices, you will start to notice that some of this is really, really dark. Now you don't want that. So you may want to just bump up the lift a little bit. That'll bring us 
just raised off of this zero line. And as we do that, for the other devices that it would be super dark on, the shadows wouldn't just overwhelm and you'd actually kind of start to see some of the detail in those shadows. So just understand your monitor as well as this um, histogram or this, this waveform, I should say, and where those values kind of fall. If you want to test it on your phone, as well as your, obviously you're seeing it on your monitor, what appears on your monitor may not look the same on your phone. So you can kind of see where your monitor stands in relation to other devices. And just keep that in mind for when you're color correcting your different images, make sure that you're not blowing things out too much or, or keeping things too dark, unless obviously that's what you're going for. But hopefully this helped you out. This is something that I started using uh, a lot and I feel like it's helped me out quite a bit. So I wanted to share it. If you are interested in more stuff on Fusion, feel free to let me know. Um, it's what I use for any sort of color correction or comping of my renders. So if you wanna see my workflow on that, then by all means, let me know in the comments below. But anyways, I do have a bunch of videos on my channel that have to do with Houdini and a bunch of stuff on redshift as well so if you're interested in, in in that then make sure you guys check those videos out but anyways hopefully this helped you out thank you guys for watching and have a good day